Hi people, welcome to UK Jazz Dance. I'm in the Blue Lab, um, talking about my show to come on my show called The Adventures of a Swing Kid. Uh, I want to share with people I've, from very young, early learning, um, I heard jazz in my mum's womb, prenatal education, if you know you think about prenatal education DNA. My parents are swing kids, because my dad was born in 1935, 142, they came when swing was huge, okay, at that time. <coughs> I want to share with people immediately, UK Jazz Dance, Freestyle dance has information missing as gaps in the history. Basically, her story and my story and many males like me who were the pioneers who've been missed out of book, written by uh, Snowboy Cogrove, a DJ, <coughs> a producer of music, <coughs> and musician and writer. Uh, I want to say immediately he wrote a book identifying that we started dancing to jazz in 1975, UK jazz dance started in 1975. That is an impossibility, so let me get straight to it. I just wrote down here at the bottom. I wrote, already in Britain, there was already West Indians, there was Africans, African Americans already in Britain. A long time ago, for 500 years, blacks have been in Britain. If people got that right. So I want to give you a very short story. Simply this, <clears throat> simply this. There was already people already here, okay, who were dancing to jazz. And then more people came here during the wars, um, right? Okay. Then what happens, for example, talk about Second World War, 39, 43, 45. <clears throat> Americans came here, West Indians, people of why did, all the colonies came to Britain and were in Europe. Have people got that? Right, okay. Then you had, four, after the war was over, there was a big Pan-African Congress movement event where a lot of people came to that. Manchester, the best one. Then you had 46 to 73, the first un 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 unbelievable modern jazz movement in Manchester. <clears throat> yeah, okay. What happened in 48, they had 46, 47, 48. Great things. People travelled here from around the world. The first ever professor, Arthur Lewis, uh, Manchester Economics, by the way. Many, many academics came here to Britain, to Manchester University and all the universities, particularly in the north of England. It was important, which was the most progressive. <clears throat> 47, they had uh, Nicholas Brothers came here, and a whole host of people came here. Then you had 48, Windrush, okay. Females were. On that, okay, they they don't been recognised. Then you had fifty, the mass migration, sixty migration, okay. So what happens is you had all these people here during that period of time. We started to dance to jazz in our early learning years. Now I was born in nineteen sixty four. Snowboy says that we started to dance to jazz in nineteen seventy five. That is an impossibility scientifically and most importantly culturally. And I'm of the cult, one of the cultures. Now what you need to stand, I will keep emphasising. Not only West Indians created this dance, and what you need to know, West Indian sisters and brothers created the dance. African West Indian brothers created the dance. Do you understand? Know I'm saying? Because people came from dance families. Do you understand? Music was prevalent in our communities, and we're very much isolated, insulated, particularly those from the slum, from the wider society that hated us, and hated our culture, and hated our parents. They were facing racism on an unprecedented scale, and the best way our parents survived, coped, managed and overcame what they were experiencing, the racism, the discrimination, the prejudices, the inequalities in every area, social, physical, intellectual, cultural, emotional, spiritual, political, economic, technological, environment, legally, was to use dance and music because they knew that dance had a whole host of benefits. One, to make them feel good. One, to give them a sense of belonging in a place where they were displaced in a place where they were treated intolerably, do you understand? And they passed that to the children. So UK jazz dance, the gaps are the climate in which it came and the reason it was created and what is its role, what was responsibility as an art in the community, art in home, art in the theatre, art in school, art in the creative culture industries because people went on to... Be, become professionals. Why? Because of the recession, it was one of the conditions, that what happened was many people did not have qualifications, for example, to go to dance school. That happened to a lot of people. So one of the key things, <clears throat> I talk about my legacy in my project, one of my projects, we both recall, my legacy was I wanted to be a stage dancer from a child, from the beginning, and I knew I had to go to dance school, but my parents couldn't afford it. When I started to go to dance school was in 1981. Do you know what I'm saying? I paid for it myself. 81 to 86. I went to dance school secretly doing ballet, doing tap, doing modern, <clears throat> doing every type of dance conceivable I could get a class to. I did it. And I swapped. I exchanged classes with dancers that I knew. 
So Irish dancer did some of that. Scottish dancer did some of that. I found out where there was some tango. I found out where there was some flamenco. I went ice skating. I went roller skating. Do you know what I'm saying? These are things that people involve themselves in. I went to martial arts. And people got that. This is all part of me doing my project. <clears throat> this is my wall at home. And what happened, I put ideas on here because I'm a visual learner, people. I'm a person with dyslexia. I didn't find out to the age of 41 I was dyslexic. Now, what was important about me was I was going into university at age 41 and found out I was dyslexic. Then I was very proud to find out I had dyslexia. What happened was one of the key things that uh, happened to me at university, I was isolated, marginalized, treated as a dick, idiot, fool, um, because I had special education needs dyslexia. I didn't know what it's like to be dyslexic, but I knew something about what it's like to be a slow learner. But slow learning is not something that you're advertised. Slow learning is not you really get help for really that much. Do you understand? Slow learning is like you are written off. <laughs> you understand? Only because my teacher, in higher, my teacher, Sir Roy Blackman, who had been with me from the age of 8 to 26, he, any place I went to do education in higher education learning, he used to write a letter, he's from a slow learning background, etc, etc, and he's help and support. I'm the person who gives rehabilitation counselling, etc, he's the one who got me support. When I went to, like I said, to university, I was the age of 41, obviously ready to cope, ready to manage what I experienced, but I documented my experience in my essential journeys, what I went through, and I found that dance played a, pr a pivotal role in enabling me to cope, manage, and overcome some of the things I experienced in university, which was being isolated. You have to understand what it's like a smaller group to be isolated in Britain. What happened, you tend to create your own subcultures, which I did. Now, there was nobody dancing UK jazz dance when I went to, to, went to Bedford, that's the first time I went to college, a higher education college, and since full time, 1891, to do dance. So I created my own culture and movements. No one was dancing. I created my own things in the gym and people started to come to them events. Do you know what I'm saying? Every day I got one well, access. I got the key to the dance studio to be my, to be my lab. <clears throat> you made dance lab and another space that was my dance lab. But people got that and that's where I did a lot of research. And I created events in there seven days a week because I had the key. Secondly, then what happened at Oxford Brooks University, I took that same when I went into Oxford Brooks University, I created, used my home as a lab and I used to dance outside my flat. There was, I had spaces close to where I lived and used exactly the same method I used in Manchester to survive as a dancer. For example, we had something called Black Door Policy. Sometimes you'd get into a club. I never went home. I used to go to a place like a park and practice because I knew that all days were coming. All days were the key essential events where the dancers used to compete against each other and it was about honour. So I never stopped training. You always kept training. Find a little space and dance. Find a little bit of space and dance. Now, one of the key things going back to do with <coughs> dance in general and with the African diaspora people is space. One of the key things that always get their spaces taken away from them or what happens is the period they can dance it always <coughs> it seems to be on a Sunday. So one of the key things historically because of history to do with slavery and Catholicism and the Sabbath, <coughs> slaves <coughs> were only allowed to dance on a Sunday but only in a certain way. They could not use their original African dancing. Do you understand? Or if they danced, there had to be a certain type of dance that was seen as feasible for the master. <coughs> for master. Do you understand? Right. So people started to mimic the, what the masters used to do. And people, the masters thought, oh, them poor little nigger wagcoon slaves. Look at the copy in our dance. But we weren't copying them. We were mimicking them because our culture knew about satire. Our culture, African culture had an extremely exceptional and outstanding dance world and music world and art world, architecture world. It was highly complex, was not recognised by the European because they saw themselves as superior to us. Not only that, they did know about it, but what happened was for slavery to work, they had to spread to the world. Remember, the church had to spread to the world that we African diaspora people were barbarians and these people eat cannibals, are cannibals, etc. When they knew that wasn't the case, because the Moors had run Europe from 700 to 1492. Remember, when did discovery start place? When did slavery start taking place? It started to take place for the Westerners in a certain type of way in the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. Why? Because they'd beaten the Moors. The Moors who had ruled them for over from the 700s to 800s. And the Moors had been part of, <coughs> the Moors had been part of the Roman period, as well as Jews, it's important, you understand, where this hatred for Jews and Romans, uh, hatred for Jews and Arabs and Moors come from, it comes back from the period of Catholicism, Roman period, 
you know what I'm saying? They brought xenophobia, but it's the Romans that you should have had fear for, do you know what I'm saying, as individuals. But the Romans did, were involved in trade and commerce with Moors, with Jews, and they knew that the Moors and Jews created wealth anywhere they were in the world. Just look today. If you look up in Manchester, you look around the world, look who creates the, the smallest businesses. Just close your eyes and a business set up. <coughs> Muslims do. And it's historical, it's known. And Jews, anywhere in the world. Yeah? And every society knows that as an individual, and people really have to have understanding. <coughs> as I said, this is my wall. <coughs> I like to ad lib. What happens is, this is great for me as a person with dyslexia, because one of the things that was recognised by my teacher, Sir Roy Blackman, was I understand concepts, it's hard for me to write down. And most importantly, Mr Blackman recognised in writing and speaking are two different things. For a person to write their concept, it's harder, <coughs> yeah? <coughs> write a concept and speak about concept speaking about concepts is faster this is a way, faster way for me to work now one of the key things I'm creating as I said the adventures of the swing kid okay I'm going to be talking about UK freestyle dance so I'm giving you insight of what I'm doing the aims and objectives if I'm doing a project now what happens is people with dyslexia get an opportunity to use video to make an application and this is what I'm doing at the moment so one of the key things I'm going to be talking about UK jazz dance freestyle dance in general and talk about the gaps the history, her stories be missed. Talk about the climate, racism, black music, white business. Talk about all the things that happened, black and white minstrel show that was happening in Britain, which is important for understand. Big entertainment that was taking place from the 1830, Mr. Class Entertainment, <coughs> yeah, was black and white minstrel show from 1830 to 1987 in the theatre, making millions of dollars. Yeah, so blacks couldn't get no jobs. So in 1958, from 1958 to 1978, on the television, black and white minstrel show, blacks wouldn't get jobs in Britain. So much so that Lenny Henry became a black and white minstrel show, became a black and white minstrel himself so he could get a job. He's so embarrassed about it. But why, Lenny? Because in America, many the theatres, uh, Black Vaudeville itself mimicked, <coughs> did, black and, did black and white minstrel. They blacked up themselves. So don't be embarrassed by it. Do you understand? And that's a shame because one of the key things about um, British... Theatre, they make blacks, make wider cultures ashamed of who they were. Remember, Britain colonialised 430 million people and told them 430 million people that your culture is inferior to us socially, physically, intellectually, culturally, emotionally, spiritually, politically, economically, technologically, environment, legally. And people need to know that created low self-esteem. Do you know that low self-esteem shrinks the brain? So what happened? You have the inferiority complex on a huge scale. Now, how did they inbreed that inferiority complex? They inbred that inferiority complex by raping women and having children and actually creating, <coughs> creating children and making them children, the dual heritage children, uh, having a higher status than those who are black. And they did that in the UK. They did that in the, the American, the Westerners did that everywhere they went, all over the world. They raped women on an unprecedented scale. No woman's been raped more than a black woman and had more children than any other woman in this world. They were used for breeding. They were used for breeding uh, stock. Uh, and you have to understand, uh, I can't even express um, the trauma that they must have gone through. So for me as a person, one of the key things I, I would talk about, what is the legacy of the West Indian? What is the legacy of the African that was taken from the land and sold to the West Indies, sold to Brazil and whatever? Is there resilience and the they, their culture, what they had. Because what happens, dance has a power to heal. And when you've gone through major trauma, you need to heal. But what happened is, the trauma is still in the DNA, but we have not identified what is the trauma. So what happened is something what I'm doing called unresolved trauma. I face, my parents face traumas that they've never spoken about. My dad and mom have, I know because I live it. I feel it and I see it. They have traumas. And one of the key things, I was lucky enough to go to cultural studies from the age of eight years old to now. He identified that the Caribbean was set upon a dysfunction. And if you want to be functional, you need to understand what your dysfunction is. How many people know what their dysfunction is, right? And how many people try to resolve your dysfunction or come to peace with it? And part of that can be your, you are a people who were sold into slavery, your people, you can be a person, came through rape. You have to understand. That's what some people are living with, has not been actually identified. My traumas have been, mum, my father, 
her mother went through hardships in the early learning years. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> just in general to do. I'm just talking from the social. They came up in impoverished circumstances, very very impoverished circumstances. But they had challenges in because they both got special education needs, and special education needs causes stress. And because they didn't understand the stress from an early age, they had something called shame of early learning. Do you know what I'm saying? And they were shamed in respect to the, their inability to speak the English language. That's one of the key things that the British were really, really good at, making people outside Britain feel bad. They don't speak the English language, you're inferior. If you can't administrate or you can't learn, think and...